What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw here, and today we're gonna to be doing another first shots. This time we're gonna be looking at the War Poet Shadow Systems MR920. Quite a mouthful there, but essentially this is a Glock 19 with a whole lot of aftermarket accessories, basically handpicked by John Lovell from Warrior Poet Society. Dude's an army ranger, so he's probably got pretty good taste. Basically all he runs is Glocks from what I hear, and this is his uh, baby. And this was sent to me by a patron supporter of mine named Patrick Stokes. Big ups to you for that, I appreciate that. Sorry it took a little bit longer to get on the channel than uh, some other guns do. Uh, it took a little while, I've been in Texas. We've we just had a lot of problems uh, filming lately, including the new uh, one foot of snow that we got last night on top of the already uh, plentiful amount of snow that we have. So uh, we're gonna be uh, paving our way down to the range today with this guy. If you're unfamiliar with the War Poet or the MR992, or the MR920, sorry, it is Shadow Systems version of the Glock 19 where they put uh, hand-picked and some of their own accessories on this gun to make it uh, functional. You know, if you get a Glock 19 out of the box, it's usually not how you like it. This probably is going to be. Shadow Systems lower, which you can get for any Glock, uh, comes with the uh, gas pedals milled right into it like that, undercut milled into it, I like that. Uh, upgraded texture and a more 1911 style grip angle, which I like as well. I actually have one of these lowers on one of my carry Glocks already, so I'm very familiar with it. Comes with a mag release, comes with a flat face trigger on it, which is, which is pretty good. I would definitely not consider it awesome. Uh, for Glocks, it's pretty good. However, uh, compared to something like a Beretta 92X Performance or something like that, it's got a relatively long reset and a, uh, maybe five to six, seven pound break, something like that. Pretty good carry trigger, however, and that is what this gun is designed for. So uh, you gotta play with the tools you got. Trigicon HD sight, front sight it looks like, and they are raised. And then we have a Holosun uh, 507C on there that is milled directly into the optic or milled directly into the slide. Uh, they did something with the slide here, uh, if memory serves me, where they can direct uh, mount optics to the slide uh, with multiple different types of optics, not just the uh, one it's milled for. So you can get it lower and then co-witness those iron sights, which I think is pretty cool. I read something about it on their website. However, this is the first shots video, so I'm just armed with the knowledge that I had before I got in here. I haven't done a ton of research. We obviously have a little bit of slide cuts there and a ton of aggressive serrations up front there. I like aggressive serrations up front, because it's easier to manipulate the slide and uh, actually run the gun uh, without uh, messing with your optic zero or anything like that by Aaron Cowan it, you know, slamming it on the back and, uh, and running it off your uh, table or your uh, big toe or anything like that. You can obviously do that in an emergency, but I wouldn't recommend doing it all the time unless you want to zero your uh, optic every single time you go to the range. It has a four and a half inch uh, extended threaded uh, barrel there. Uh, for suppressors and things like that. A uh, single piece recoil spring in there, uh, whatever the hell that means, I just assume it's not a double captured spring like a Glock, and I assume it's also prob, well, I mean, I can assume everything I want, but we might as well just go and look. Okay, usually Glocks come apart like that. Can't get my fingies on it. There we go. Yeah, so it's just a uh, standard uh, stainless steel guide rod there and I have to assume it's probably a slightly lower poundage spring since that is usually what people put in them. Uh, Glocks come with like 15 or 17, I think 17 pound uh, recoil springs, people usually put 15 or 13s in them, that way it lightens up that overspring. So when you're shooting, a lot of times the recoil that you feel is not the gun coming back, but the gun uh, respringing and coming forward and dipping you down a little bit further, and then it takes a little longer between shots. Lightening up that recoil spring can help out with that, also can help out with lower powered ammunition. Go to the range today and we're going to be using uh, Federal Ultra Target and Range. I always forget the name of this, so I brought the box to show you guys. Before we go to the range, I want to mention the Gundies. Uh, the Gundies happened. I wanted to tell you the uh, results. I lost both of my categories, however, I lost some of the best people in the industry. I lost Best Shooter to Jerry Michalek. <laughs> it's tough not to. Pretty much everyone else on the planet does as well. In, in all fairness, the guy is literally my icon. He's taught me how to shoot in his videos. Met him a few times. Salt of the earth dude. Amazing. I also lost best gun reviewer to Grantham, but again, hey, pretty amazing gun reviewer, and at least gave me a shout out. Dude's pretty cool. If you don't know either of those guys, definitely go check them out. This video is also brought to you by USCCA. The US Concealed Carry Association helps responsible Americans like you prepare for what happens before, during, and after an act of lawful self-defense. USCCA members get life-saving education, expert training, plus self-defense liability insurance, which I believe is a must-have if you carry a gun. Plus, a USCCA membership is always risk-free because they have a 100% money-back guarantee. 
If you're interested in getting USCCA insurance, all you gotta do is go to the link in the uh, description and sign up. It'll help me and it'll help you guys as well. I don't take a lot of sponsors, but I take a few that I really believe in and USCCA is one of those. I carry a gun because I'm afraid of what might happen to me or my loved ones and I carry USCCA insurance because of what might happen in case I have to use my firearm. So overall, if you don't wanna be broke after you defend your life lawfully, USCCA can really help you out with that. Looks like it's zeroed. All right, so I was a little worried about that. We wanted to see if old Patrick Stokes had the, the gun zeroed or not. I wasn't entirely sure, but it appears to be zeroed since the first shot out of the gun hit at uh, 80 yards or so. It is gonna be an awful hard hit today because we have the sun right in our face, uh, the white targets on the white background, and then on top of that, we have some shadow there uh, on the berm as well. So it's gonna be very difficult to hit it long distance. So if we do, that just shows a testament to the gun. It's actually about one degree outside as well. And I have uh, these amazing shooting gloves on that have literally no warmth to them whatsoever. So we'll just see how we do. So the first thing I can tell you is shooting in the sun sucks, but the gun itself handles very well. Uh, to me, a little bit lighter recoil even than a Glock 19, and I think that's probably because I like the grip angle a little bit better. I got that little one. All right, so I can even hit those little ones from here. Right off the bat, accuracy seems to be pretty excellent, especially for a striker fired gun. And it should be because this is obviously not a stock gun. Well, I mean, it's a stock gun, but it's not uh, a $500 gun. Let's go with that. I don't actually know how much this costs. I was gonna look it up before the end of the video, but I have to assume it's somewhere in the thousand to fifteen hundred dollar range based on all the accessories. Uh, Hollow Sun is lighting it though. I love this little optic. It reminds me of an RMR, but with more room. So I, the RMR is so durable, and that's why most people carry it. That's why I carry it. But it has a big U notch up there, which obviously enhances the durability and is patented by them. And the reason it has that is so when it hits, it kind of displaces all the shock and doesn't break. The, bet, the detriment to that, however, is that you lose a lot of your sight picture, whereas this hollow sun is not much bigger and it's not much heavier and it has a significantly larger field of view allowing you to get better accuracy. Also has that solar panel on top, which is real nice. I'm gonna mess around with the iron sights here a little bit too since they are uh, co-witness because I do like this set of iron sights a great deal. I don't know if these are, oh, these are actually Ameriglow, so that makes sense because Ameriglow is my favorite company. Ameriglow essentially takes Trijicon front sights there and kind of makes them a little bit cheaper for you, which is why I always suggest Ameriglow Hackathorns or Spartans uh, because they're just so much cheaper than HDs and they're almost the exact same thing. The only difference is they usually don't have the uh, uh, night illuminated uh, tritium vials on the back, but who the hell needs those anyway? Rear sight is supposed to be superimposed, front sight's what you're worried about. Recoil and pulse feels pretty good. The only problem I have is that John Lovell is a tiny little man, <laughs> but uh, he uh, the grip on this is very small for me, and that uh, one of the benefits to a magwell generally is it pushes your hand up higher on the gun, unless you have big old hands like I do, and then it just kind of feels cramped. So maybe for the full review, I don't know if Patrick will be unhappy with me if I do this, but I might actually take this magwell off because I feel like I can get a better grip without that magwell there. And in all fairness, I can honestly uh, change magazines just about the same speed. Uh, these carry magwells here, they look great and they do help some people. However, uh, to me, I mean, if they're not super beveled and stuff like that, they don't do very well at uh, magazine changes anyway. So overall, the trigger feels pretty good, especially in action. We'll have to go up close and shoot a little bit faster, but we'll probably move up to 50 yards now and uh, speed things up a little bit. 
I'm out of breath. And go. Tell the people why you're out of breath. Well, I thought it'd be smart to shovel a path, but turns <laughs> out that's out rather steam. silly. Somebody has shorter boots than another person, so I can just walk through the snow. But uh, yeah, oh well. Womp womp. Well, let's try it at 50 yards here. I imagine if we can hit it 80, we can probably hit it 50, but uh, one never knows. All right, one thing that just totally distracted me was the uh, uh, Glare. ejection pattern. Oh. I don't know if you saw that. That's the first time I've ever had that happen. I had several land on the top of the gun as I was shooting, and it was like bumping up and down as the slide was going back and forth. I was wondering why it wasn't hitting me in the face. Yeah, that was that might be that might be the weirdest ejection pattern I've ever seen. Let's try that again here. All right, not so much that time. I can't really tell while I'm shooting, but uh, yeah, that first couple of times I felt something bobble around on the optic and hit forward and all that, and that was very strange. But no reliability problems whatsoever, and obviously the gun locked back, so pretty good to go so far. Uh, what do you think? You shooting want me to good. shoot it? Well, do you want to shoot at 50 or do you want to move a little bit closer? You probably want to move a little bit closer, I would bet. Well, why don't I shoot it at 50, and if I suck, we just won't put it in. Well, I'll put it in. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> All right. Ready? The best camera person of all time. I'm just kidding. All right, I'm ready to go. It If you hit it hard enough, clocks do that. They just uh, uh, chamber the round right away. So, right. You're, so you're good. Wow, this is not happening. Oh, it's fun time. That. I just wanted to give you an example of how difficult it kind of is to shoot. One thing that's already happening. Hit you in the face. My glasses are fogging up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so are mine. Nerdy girl problem. You gotta adapt and overcome. Okay, buddy. Well, that's certainly not happening. No, give it a shot. Give it a few. You might be able to get it. There's a lot of steel targets on there. Just shoot randomly. You might hit one. Let's see how long I can hold my breath. They are coming straight back. Clearly the ejection I have to pattern, go. those shells are ejecting right at you. That's kind of how I felt too. Well, I'm used to shit coming at me. But <laughs> Is that right? I feel like that's an X-rated joke you're trying to slip in there. I just get ejected shells all the time. Yeah. Let's move up so I don't look like a dope. So during our intermission there, we managed to shovel our way from there all the way to here. I'm trying to redeem myself because I did really bad at 50 yards. We'll see how I do. Oh my god. Let's see. Well, yeah, without the glasses, that should be so How much better. now? Oh, that got me straight in the face. That's why you wear eye pros, son. What would you think? You shot it well. Now that you took all of your protective gear off. Hopefully no children are watching, but <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> Is that right? Okay, Yeager. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, feels pretty good. A little snappier than I like. Right. But you know me, I like those five to six thousand dollar guns, so. Yeah. If it's not Atlas. What can I say? Right. Okay, let's see how you do. Which one are you shooting at? Well, the big ones. Oh. I gotta tell you, I don't like that trigger. I'm gonna be honest with you. That's not my biggest thing. Uh, I like the gun overall, but I don't like a Zeb style Glock triggers. They just have so much more reset than they need to. 
That's so funny, that thing can't fall because all the snow. Well, I got him after a while. It is a ridiculous amount of snow. Double tap. <laughs> <sighs> all right, what do we got, one mag left? My fingers are so cold, I'm about to, about to fall off here. We got about 200 rounds through the gun now, zero malfunctions whatsoever, as I expected. And uh, very accurate, a little bit slower than I'd like. Now if it were my gun, I'd probably change the trigger. Overall, I really like it, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I wish I looked up the price. I assume it's around $1,500 like a lot of the Shadow Systems. Comes with every accessory you're ever going to need, every accessory that you'd want to put on a Glock. So if you're looking for a carry gun that you want to customize, this might be the better option. A lot of people customize their own guns and they don't obviously do their own QC, so they come out with a little bit less reliable platform. This seems to be very reliable with having all of, I mean, I really like that slide. I like the fact that it comes with the threaded barrel with the thread protector on it. We're gonna try this uh, for the full review with a uh, Omega 9K on it. I like the extended magazine release. I love that hollow sun. We'll have to do a review of that as well. I don't like the magazine well, and I don't like the trigger. Uh, if this were my gun, I'd throw an Apex in there or maybe a Johnny Glock or something like that. Something with a little better reset and not quite as smooshy. Uh, that thing is like squeezing an orange with your finger, but overall I'm sure it's reliable and uh, Apparently John likes that trigger because he put it in his gun You want to see a thousand round review this let me know uh, whether or not we do a thousand rounds We'll definitely do a full review again big. Thanks to Patrick for sending this out here really appreciate that makes things a lot easier And uh, thank you for letting me run your gun if you like this video, please like and subscribe Please up at your Oklahoma shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later